Hey Facebook friends, Marianne here. I just want to take a moment to talk to you guys because, you know, many of you have told me that it's really helpful when I do one of these videos that's keeping it real. And um, right now you have me with this thing on my head because I have a migraine. <laughs> and I want to balance out and make a conscious effort to balance out the kind of content that you see on my Facebook page and my Instagram account and whatnot, which is all about trying to project a somewhat glamorized version of things, which is real, but it hides a lot of the actual facts behind what happens. And the reason why I want to share all this is because some of you have been sharing with me that you've gone through challenges in life and you wonder, how is it possible to get all this done and, and look like you're having fun the whole time 24-7? And the reality is it's not always like that. I was recently sharing with an amazing woman um, named Morella Sula. She's CEO of the Global Woman Group. And she and I went out to the horse races um, out in Chichester. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and we were going out there mainly for business, you know, looking at some different things and meeting with some people and it happened to be out at the horse races. <laughs> so we're not out there gambling. Um, but anyway, one of the things I was sharing with her that day was an amazing choice that I was given. And this isn't a, a story of where I did something amazing or I did something right. It was a story of where I did some things that were very, very wrong and that I'm actually ashamed of and embarrassed about as a 45-year-old woman looking back at my teenage years. But it's in a moment that really was an epiphany for me that defined my life. And in the uh, spirit of keeping it real, I'm telling you this if I have a pounding headache. <laughs> but, you know, the story basically went, as many of you know, um, I was brought up with a wonderful pair of parents that gave me many, many blessings. But unfortunately, my mom was bipolar. So one of the reasons why I have a lot of my seizures and stuff was because her bipolar manic depression led her to be sometimes physically abusive and bang my head into the wall a lot. And I grew up being really, really pissed about that kind of stuff and not really having a compassionate understanding of what led her to have the issues that she had. And as a teenager, I was so mad about it and so depressed about it that, you know, my grades fell, I was struggling, and something which I don't often share with people, but I'll be very open about this here, um, you know, my grades went so far down that my high school um, came to me and said, look, if you want to actually graduate, you're going to have to go to um, this college and take an English class. And if you make A's, you can still get your high school diploma. If you don't, you won't be able to graduate from high school. And, you know, that was an amazing gift of opportunity that they gave me. And at that time, though, as a teenager, I was just pissed at the world. And I went into that class, and I had an attitude that's very embarrassing to reflect on. And the teacher very rightfully pulled me out of class one day and said, what is wrong with you? And I was so shocked because this woman... You know, I didn't know her from Adam, but she looked at me, and I hope if you're out there, Professor, <laughs> and I'm embarrassed I can't remember your name, but if you're out there and you see this, please know that you made an incredible positive impact on my life. And this woman in many ways saved my life because she, and I don't mean that lightly, and I'll explain in a minute. She said to me, you know, what happened to you? You were like this shining light from the time you were a kid, and then out of nowhere, you, you just, something's happened. You're so mad. You're so angry. What really is happening to you? And it was the first time that I really had an adult just pause and go, what's wrong? Where are you at? What are you struggling with? And... At the time, I was so mad. I didn't have the ability to tell her I'm angry that my mom is physically abusive, that I'm terrified of her, and that my dad's not protecting me, blah, 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 you know, and I was so pissed, and I didn't know how to say anything about it. Instead, I looked at her and had all this attitude, again, that's very embarrassing to reflect on, and I said in my typical teenage snooty way, well, tell me what you want. I'll make a poem. I'll make a poem on the topic. I'll, you know, ask me any question about what was in class. I can tell you any answer, you know, and you know, whatever I give you, whatever I write, whatever I say will be, you know, better than any quality of any of these kids in this class. And she looked at me and, and keep in mind, this was like a, a graduate level class. She looked at me and she said, you know, I have absolutely no doubt that you're right. 
But that's a God-given talent. That's not something you've worked to earn. So I'm going to give you an opportunity that you're obviously too angry and too young to really appreciate. I'm going to give you an A so that you can move on with your life, get your diploma, and figure something out. And I'm going to ask you to never come back to my class. But I'm going to ask you to go home and to really think about where you're at. And this is my gift to you. And embarrassingly, as a teenager, I just, you know, I was like, whatever, you know, <laughs> left with my attitude, went home. And I don't know how this happened, but my dad, who was dealing with his own difficulties in life, and I was so wrapped up in mine that I didn't even notice what he was struggling with. And he came home and just miraculously knew to come home that day. And I had gone to the top of the stairs in that, my house, and I was looking down. Now, as an adult, I know it was PTSD, but at that age, I just didn't understand what was happening. I was just sitting there, and I was remembering a time when my mom had been so abusive. You know, she had literally th picked up my dad and shoved him down the stairs, and he had lain there on the bottom of the stairs, not moving, and I thought she'd killed my dad. And I'd run the other room and she had chased me with a knife and I thought she was going to kill me. And for a miracle, my dad had somehow come back to, came in and took the knife out of her hand. And then my mom had a flashback from when she was six years old and was like, my dad's been shot. My daddy's been shot. So I had to go from being this terrified uh, teenager from her to having to be the adult and, you know, trying to help this six-year-old, which she became in her mind. And it was such a traumatic experience for me. And that was just kind of one of the, the typical things growing up with her. Um, and for some weird reason, that day I went home, I sat at the top of the stairs, and the whole scene played out in front of me. And it was like watching a, a video, even seeing myself, you know, just like the whole thing. And I sat there feeling sorry for myself, crying, being angry at my dad for not stopping it, being angry at my mom for doing it, being angry at no one else for intervening, and just... You know, poor me, poor me, poor me, you know, pissed at the world, angry, hurt, whatever. And my dad just showed up and he came up and sat next to me on the stairs and he said, I'm going to tell you a few things and you need to listen. And he said, the first thing I'm going to tell you is I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't protect you more from your mom. The second thing I'm going to say is you're absolutely right. This never should have happened. It wasn't fair to you. But here's the thing that I really need you to listen. He said, Right now, you're a young woman and you get to decide what your life is going to be. You can either go through your entire life blaming your mother for all the abuse or blaming me for not preventing it and not letting yourself move forward and achieving everything you can be in this world. Or you can say, okay, that was then. Now I'm a woman and I am choosing to achieve. I'm choosing to be this thing, whatever it is you choose for yourself. And he said, and as of right now, you have a choice in which direction your life will go. Well, at that age, I was so pissed at her and at him. And I was like, how dare you? <laughs> but looking back at it as a grown woman, that was an incredible opportunity. And it was one of the most profound lessons my father ever gave me. And recently I was sharing this story with my friend Morella. We had just gone to the racetrack and we were riding, you know, um, back together. And when I shared this with her, she said, you know, that is a really profound thing because not everybody is given the opportunity to recognize in a very hard, singular moment in their life, what am I going to be? Am I going to let past things keep me a victim in my head or am I going to choose to become empowered and responsible for my life? And when she put it that way, I realized, you know, taking responsibility for your life is the opposite of being a victim in your life. It is not an easy thing. And one of the things I learned is life isn't fair. As I've told many of you that follow my, you know, my post here on Facebook or YouTube or whatnot, Instagram, you know, it's, I did absolutely nothing to earn a single dime financially what I've been given. And all the different things that have saved my life many times over, whether it was being, you know, in the hospital a month at a time with asthma, whether it's been things to help me overcome my, um, my seizures or the strokes I had or any other stuff, you know, um, that the, all the therapy to help me with my hearing loss so I can speak correctly, all this stuff. You know, I did nothing to earn that. But the privilege of it, 
gives me a sense of responsibility. And all the difficulties give me a sense of compassion that I might not otherwise have had. And the reason I'm sharing all this right here with you all as I have a migraine is because it's really important to ground things. And while I've been showing photographs in my social media on, you know, how fabulous it is to be at a wonderful meeting with amazing people who truly inspire me, and every one of you know who you are, Lord Andrew Stone, David Solomons, Rabbi David Geffen, Kid, um, you know, just every single one of you, Kenneth. Um, getting to work with my incredible partner, Clu Uromo, uh, my wonderful husband, Joshua Frank, and then all of the wonderful Mimnazine team, Yolanda, Isabel, Philip, Todd, you know, Wendell, everybody that's doing amazing stuff, keeping things going, getting to work with Tanya on Eco Eco, our development company, all of you, my trustees, you know, um, Chase Robertson, you know, Felix Menisses, everybody, and my assistant, Alan Keith, Anthony Chisholm, all of you know who you are. And I'm sure I've missed many, many of you. And of course, all the wonderful Maya and Tolteca that keep those programs going, the Shinto keeping their programs going, you know, um, Hanan Schlesinger over, you know, in Israel, Palestine, all of you are doing such amazing work. And thank you, thank you, thank you. But I want people to understand that it takes a whole team to achieve these things. And that what you see is a glamorized version of reality because in the background are people that have compassion and understanding of this hard work and that it is something that all of us have to have in order to move our dreams forward. So I hope this helps those of you who are looking at these photos and going, oh, why can't I do that? The truth is this. <laughs> you wear yourself to a frazzle and sometimes you get a migraine and it's all those bumps and bruises that give you the strength to make the incredible things happen. And it's a team that makes the brilliance happen. So thank you all, love you all, and we'll talk to you later.